after this much insulation, now every day is like being inside of a comfortable house. Why is this? This video is the most important van life information you can ever watch if you are building a van yourself. This is going to massively help you guys understand the difference of what it feels like before and after installing insulation in your van. A lot of people say you might not need to insulate. I am of the complete opposite mindset. You should always insulate. And I'm going to show you why and to what extent for your situation and actually explain which insulation to use where based on thermodynamics. Insulation is the most important thing you can do to keep yourself comfortable in all types of weather and seasons. I repeat, it's the most important part of a van build. My first van started with bare metal walls and a bed inside. Being inside on an 80 degree and very sunny day, the van becomes an oven and you might actually feel like you are dying. Sleeping inside of this, you feel the sweat beating down your back and making your bed and pillow wet all night long. And every morning you swear you are going to find some new solution that you just can't think of. Being inside of this on a 30 degree day, the van turns into a drafty freezer box. And again, you feel like you could die. Sleeping overnight, your skin constantly touches a part of the mattress that is literally freezing. When you adjust your body in different sleep positions, you are constantly waking up but with enough comforters or a good sleeping bag, this can at least be bearable. I put in about an inch of XPS board on the walls plus two to three inches on the ceiling in my first van. This made the 80 degree sunny days bearable due to blocking the radiant heat of the sun heated metal. Get under the roof of the fan and then take your clothes off <laughs> and you can kind of take the heat being inside in a 90 degree weather. At night, you are still sweating and making a mess of your bed. Now in 30 degree weather, your breath and body heat actually help to warm up the place now because the insulation is trapping your heat in. It's a little bit more bearable, but every part of your mattress you aren't touching constantly gets freezing again with a, within a minute. My new van has five inch walls all the way around besides the window which has reflective material on the back of that curtain and the sticker and the glass itself reflects like 80% of the UV rays. The floor is one and a half inches of XPS board. The ceiling is three inches and each door on the sides right here have another three inches. This thing is well insulated. There are three pieces of XPS board from top to bottom that overlap each other and wool life wool behind the top part and the bottom. The walls aren't done yet, which is good for you because you can actually see the sexiness. Yeah. My van's butt naked. Cover your eyes. Being inside of this before the insulation was about the same as my first fan was before insulation. But after this much insulation, now every day is like being inside of a comfortable house. Why is this? Insulation works by basically slowing down the transfer of heat from the outside when it's scorching hot. It just won't get as hot as quickly and it also won't feel as hot at the worst times because it's blocking the metal from being an oven. Look, I'm going to get way more scientific here in a second, but I want to lay it out in a simple layman's terms first. Some people say that insulation can be bad because it can also trap the heat of the hot days inside overnight while you sleep. It's absolutely true, but all you need to do is open your doors for 30 seconds to let all the hot air out and you're back with fresh air inside. Don't listen to these people, please insulate. It's the most important thing you can do to be comfortable and not create a video or post in the future saying, oh, van life was too hard. I had to quit. Van life can be just as comfortable as a house. And literally all my friends who have been in my van agree. This thing is comfortable as fuck. With the roof fan, I don't sweat overnight. 
even when it's like over 80 degrees. And just think, having girls over that actually prefer to sleep in the van. I have a full video coming out about my diesel heater soon, but understand this, before installation, my heater could run a total of 21 days without refueling on a full tank. It was always running and it could not cycle on and off because it just couldn't ever actually heat up the entire place when it was like 30 degrees out. The heat went right out of the bare metal. Now I can run this heater for over 100 days with a full tank because the space inside heats up within five minutes and stays warm for over 30 minutes before the heater needs to even cut back on again. The insulation cut fuel costs at a ratio of five to one. Even without a heater, would this amount of insulation make five times of a difference on my comfort levels throughout the seasons? Yes, and it does. If someone on a different channel says something different, look, I'm just telling you my experience and they might have done their insulation a lot less sexy than mine. Look. I'm going to quickly cover thermodynamics in a way that is easy to understand for the practical application in your van. Heat is transferred in three different ways. And to keep your van warm or cool in the summer, you have to take each way into account while installing your insulation. The first is conduction. If two objects are touching each other and one is hot and the other is cold, the heat will move into the colder object and the warmer object will lose some of its heat in that transfer. Take this wood, for example. It has a nail in it that is touching the van metal behind the wall. It's what we call a thermal bridge because the nail is warm from the heat inside and is moving the heat into the van metal, which is colder given it's freezing outside. It's a weak point in the overall insulation. It's a spot where the heat is escaping. Can't really always be helped, but you know, you gotta build your van. The second way heat transfers is convection. It's like when the heat moves through the air, creating drafts. We know heat rises, but warm air also wants to move into colder areas to equalize temperatures. While the warm air is moving towards the cold air, this creates motion in the air, which causes wind or drafts. You can fix the issue with this in your van by making sure every little crevice is blocked with insulation, especially around the doors. The third way heat transfers is radiation. Objects that are hot will radiate waves out from them through space. The best way I can think to describe this is when you are sitting in your empty van on a hot sunny day. The sun heated metal radiates through space inwards and onto your skin and you feel this. This is what heat waves are. On a warm sunny day, go into a parking lot and stand around a ton of cars. You'll feel the radiant heat coming off the car's metal. Back to our winter example, the heat is escaping the van through radiation in the same way, it's just kind of backwards. Any heated object like the van metal from the inside heater is radiating out into space and you're losing your heat. Each material you build with has its own thermal properties. Some materials like wood and insulation are really bad at conducting heat, meaning that heat doesn't flow through them very quickly when touching another object. This is a good thing and why insulation works. Insulation is very poor at conducting heat, so simply you want to cover all the walls with something like XPS board or sheep's wool to protect the internal objects from this heat transfer. Other objects are really good at reflecting radiant heat like mirrors or a material called reflectix that we use to reflect the sunlight's heat back out from our car windows. It just reflects the radiant heat of the sun. Windows might block wind from letting convection happen, but radiant heat goes right through them like they aren't even there. Unless you have a tinted window or a white perforated sticker over them that reflects the light from outside, radiant heat will get in. The back of my curtain is also reflective for bouncing radiant heat that finds its way in. Look, I no longer advise anyone to use Reflectix in a van. It takes an enormous amount of space to properly install. You need at least three fourths of an inch between it and the heated van metal for it to even work. Plus it only protects well from one type of heat transfer, which is radiation. It really doesn't help all that well with conductive heat and it's expensive. 
The benefit of Reflectix will never be as good as foam or sheep's wool, given the same amount of space is used to install them. Just use it for your windows and that's it, like that. And in the winter, you want to have the reflective side pointed inwards at you. Otherwise, you are just blocking the radiant heat of the outside coming in to warm your van, which technically can keep your van colder. Don't get Reflectix, don't get Reflectix, use it for your window, just it. This is how I insulated my van with five inches of insulation over each wall, top to bottom, and all of it overlapping with the ceiling and the floor for no gaps. I started with the van interior and stuffed wool life wool into these parts of the wall. Then I mounted wooden planks for framing all over the walls to build upon, but also to fit insulation behind and in between. Stuffing wool into all these smaller areas like this back metal frame also helps to minimize airflow, reducing convection. You can see some wool life wool up here. It actually has its benefits, not just insulation, but it also kind of like gathers some of that moisture over time and it makes it so it's less humid inside. Now, you only want to use it if you have proper ventilation. You definitely want it to keep it ventilated in here or else it can really like grab up a lot of that humidity in the air and just kind of stay there. But as long as you have the this going, everything's good and that will uh, dissipate over time and uh, along with the day and night cycle. If you're watching outdoors, embrace. Subscribe and hit the bell for future video updates. Click on this video for another video of mine. See you next time.